بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you my students? I hope that you're happy and healthy and ready for today's lesson in Unit 3 which will be the conversation but before we do that let's revise our previous lesson the grammar lesson if you remember we took the adverbs of a degree which tells us the intensity of the verb or the adjective or maybe another adverb like to or very absolutely uh, just, nearly, hardly, and etc. Then we took the adverbs of degree that they usually come before the main verb that they modify. They come before the main verb. For example here, I've almost finished packing. So almost comes before finished. Also they come before the adjective or the adverb they modify. For example, when you say the house is very big. So the uh, adverb here comes before the adjective. He read the map very carefully. Also, we use enough. When enough is used as an adverb of degree, it's placed after the adjective. For example, when you say uh, the sound is not loud enough, we put enough after the adjective. Then we took the sentence adverbs. Sentence adverbs modify an entire sentence or a whole clause within a sentence. They indicate the attitude of the speaker. So the sentence of adverbs are related to the speaker and his attitude. Some common uh, sentence adverbs here actually, certainly, honestly, clearly, evidently, presumably, etc. Also the sentence adverbs here, some sentences usually go at the beginning of the sentence, frankly, honestly, etc. Sometimes you use it uh, in the beginning of the sentence. When you say, honestly, I'm very disappointed. Other sentence adverbs can go after the verb uh, be, before simple tense of other verbs, or after an auxiliary verb in a compound verb. You are obviously having a good time. He is certainly spent. The flight has undoubtedly left by now. So let's jump to today's lesson, the conversation. These are the objectives for today. We use the new words in a conversation, use the new words in a conversation, so we'll be learning uh, new words in the conversation and how we use them. We use the real talk phrases in new sentences. Of course, we'll be learning the real talk here. Make special requests, decline special requests. So we will know how to make a request and decline a request. So. What do you do when you board a plane? Of course, you can see here the pictures. You can know, as I said before, the theme of this unit is uh, traveling, uh, vacation, uh, hotels, all related to traveling. So what do you see here in these uh, pictures? Uh, yes, the first picture here, you see a plane flying in the sky. Of course, we all uh, love to go on a plane. Some people are scared of going in a plane. And the second picture here are the seats of the plane. You can see the windows here. Also, you can see the aisle. The aisle is the pathway between the chairs. We call it the aisle. So what do you do when you board a plane? Uh, do you have to sit in your assigned seat? Uh, where do you like to sit by? a window or the aisle. So let's take the first one. What do you do when you board the plane? Once you uh, board the plane, what do you do? Yes, of course. First, uh, the flight attendant will see your ticket and uh, he or she will uh, show you to your seat. Then you put your bag in the luggage area above your seat. Then, of course, you will sit in your assigned seat, the seat that is mentioned in your boarding pass. Do you have to sit in your assigned seat? Do you have to sit in your assigned seat? Or you can just sit anywhere. So, of course, you have to sit in the seat that you have booked uh, previously, the seat that was assigned to you. So, do you have to sit in your uh, assigned seat? Yes, of course. Where do you like to sit by? A window or on the aisle? Where do you like to sit? by a window or the aisle. Of course, this is a matter of 
uh, preferences. Some people uh, prefer uh, the window. Some people prefer the aisle so can th they can stretch their feet. Uh, for me personally, uh, of course, I prefer the window so that, so that when we take off or even when you, we are in the sky, I can open the window and enjoy the view outside. Like the view here, you can see the clouds. That's why I prefer the, the window, mostly because of the view. So here's a conversation uh, here between the attendant and the passenger. And remember to close your books. Close your book now and listen, because we'll be later listening again while you're reading along, uh, along opening your books. So let's uh, hear now the uh, conversation between the flight attendant and the passenger. Let's listen. Flight C-458 is ready for takeoff. Please ensure your seatbelts are fastened and your seats are in the upright position. Excuse me. Yes? Can I get something for you? No, but I wonder if I can ask you a question. Certainly. I see that there is an empty row near the front of the plane. I was wondering if it would be possible to change seats. I usually try to get some sleep during red-eye flights and it would be much easier if I could spread out. Unfortunately, that won't be possible. It's against our policy for passengers to leave their assigned seats on this airline. Well, that's a crummy policy. I don't get it. Other airlines allow it. Why should passengers be crammed together when there are open seats on the flights? Please try to understand. The problem is that if we gave you the seat, it wouldn't be fair to other passengers who might also want the open seat. That's a drag, especially since I requested a window seat at the front of the plane. And they put me on the aisle, near the back. Could I see your ticket, please? Sure. Why? Sir, the empty window seat at the front of the plane is your seat. Your seat is number 3, not 33. Oh, awesome. So, can you tell what happened here? Can you summarize the story between the passenger and the flight uh, attendant? Yes, he called the flight attendant and told her that he wanted to change his uh, seat. He wanted, uh, uh, he wants to sit in a window seat. So he said, excuse me, can I go to that empty seat there right next to the window? She said, no, you can't change your seats. This is your assigned seat. Then he complained that uh, this is a wrong policy. We should sit wherever the open seats are, etc. Then he said, even I uh, booked for a window seat, you gave me an aisle seat. Then she said, can you show me your ticket? Then she uh, figured out that he made a mistake by sitting in the number uh, 33 instead of 3. That this uh, empty seat next to the window was actually his uh, seat. You can see here, uh, uh, your seat is number 3, not 33. So he was happy at the end, he said, Awesome. Awesome means that you are happy about something. So what's your opinion of the, ma of the uh, man's request? What is your opinion of the man's request? Regardless of his, uh, uh, that he was right or wrong, what is your opinion of his request that he wanted to change his assigned uh, seat? Can you, is it okay if you change your seat that you've already booked or not? Of course, this is uh, your opinion. Uh, to me that you have to sit in the seat that you already booked or it will be a mess that people will sit wherever they want. So what do you think, uh, what's your opinion of the man's request? I think it's wrong that you have to sit in your assigned uh, seat unless that the plane took off and you're in the, in the air, now you can sit in the, if there's an open seat. But before takeoff, no, that's a mistake. Uh, was it okay to ask for the seat change? Was it okay for the, uh, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, for the ask of the seat change? Was it okay or not? Of course, it wasn't okay. The flight attendant told him that he, he must uh, sit in his assigned uh, seat. What do you think of the airline's policy? What do you think? of the airline policy, the policy that you don't sit wherever you want, you have to sit in your assigned seat. 
what do you think of this policy? Is it working? Is it good? Is it bad? This is up to you. For me, I think that it's really extremely necessary that you should sit in your assigned seat. Otherwise, it will be a chaos. It will be a mess. People will come and sit wherever they, uh, wherever, uh, wherever they want. Have you seen other examples of airplane passengers having problems with seatings? Have you ever been in a plane and you heard some loud noises? Someone is arguing with the pilot or with the flight attendant that they want to change uh, their seat. Or maybe you even yourself uh, that you wanted to, to change your seat. Have you seen a problem like that before? So if you, if you did see, you uh, should tell the uh, story to your uh, colleagues. So we will listen again now, but uh, for this time, open your books and read along. Open your books and while you're listening, try to read along. This is a reading practice also. So let's listen. Flight C-458 is ready for takeoff. Please ensure your seatbelts are fastened and your seats are in the upright position. Excuse me. Yes? Can I get something for you? No but I wonder if I can ask you a question. Certainly. I see that there is an empty row near the front of the plane. I was wondering if it would be possible to change seats. I usually try to get some sleep during red-eye flights and it would be much easier if I could spread out. Unfortunately, that won't be possible. It's against our policy for passengers to leave their assigned seats on this airline. Well, that's a crummy policy. I don't get it. Other airlines allow it. Why should passengers be crammed together when there are open seats on the flights? Please try to understand. The problem is that if we gave you the seat, it wouldn't be fair to other passengers who might also want the open seat. That's a drag, especially since I requested a window seat at the front of the plane. And they put me on the aisle, near the back. Could I see your ticket, please? Sure. Why? Sir, the empty window seat at the front of the plane is your seat. Your seat is number three, not 33. Oh, awesome. So as we mentioned earlier that at the end of the story, the man was happy that he was mistaken, number three for number uh, 33, while he explained it to the, while the flight attendant explained it to him. And remember that flight attendant, this term is applied whether the flight attendant is a male or a female. So if it's a man or a woman, both, you can call them the flight uh, attendant. So the real talk here, red eye is, it means overnight, red eye overnight. When he said I don't like uh, red eye flights, it means the flights that are overnight. Uh, crummy, bad, when he said that's a crummy uh, policy, he said that's a crummy policy, it means it's a, a bad policy. When you don't like something, he said it's crummy. I don't get it. I don't get it, it means that I don't understand. When you don't under understand something, someone is trying to explain something to you, you say, uh, I don't get it, I don't understand what you're saying. Uh, this uh, a drag, disappointment. When something is uh, described as a drag, disappointment. When you say what a drag, it means what a disappointment. Uh, awesome, terrific, awesome, terrific. When you say something awesome, it means you're happy about something, uh, terrific, uh, wonderful. When you say this is awesome, so it's a positive uh, word. It's a word that gives a positive uh, vibes. So here are some questions here. Let's try to answer them uh, regard, uh, re regarding some of the real talk words here. The first one, why do you think that overnight flights are called red eye flights? Why do you think that the flights that are night, overnight, why do we call them red eye? Is it because your eyes are turning red? Of course not. So why do we call them red eye? Let's check the answer here. Because overnight travelers are usually very tired and have red eyes. Yes, of course, as it was uh, correct before. Because once you're tired and very sleepy, your eyes are beginning to turn some some reddish let's say that's why they call it red eye flight because of your eyes actually a little bit are turning red because you are tired and sleepy 
are the expressions crummy and drag formal or informal expressions? Are they formal or informal expressions? Are they used uh, in a polite manner, formal, or are they informal with the way the language you can speak with your uh, friends, your colleagues? So uh, the expressions uh, drag and crummy, are they formal or informal expressions? Of course, they are informal. Crummy especially is not very polite and should be used with care. Especially the word crummy is not very polite, as I mentioned er uh, earlier. Uh, crummy especially is not very polite and should be used with care. What doesn't the passenger get when he said, I don't get it? What doesn't he get? What doesn't he understand? Okay, let's check the answer together. He doesn't know why he can't sit in the open seat. He said, I don't get it. There's an open seat there. No one is sitting there. Why can't I go and sit there? He doesn't understand the policy. Why did the airline uh, company put this policy? She said, no, uh, you know, it's against the policy for passengers to change their seats whenever they like. He said, this is a crummy policy. I don't get it. He doesn't know why he can't sit in the open seat. Why does the passenger say awesome at the end of the conversation? Remember at the end of the uh, conversation he said, oh, awesome, terrific, now I'm happy, this is wonderful. So why does he say awesome? What was he happy about? Very good. He's happy that he will get the seat he wanted because actually the seat he, he wanted was actually his seat, number, th number three. Again, he's happy that he will get the seat he wanted, which was actually his seat next to the window. So he's like me. He, we both like window seats rather than aisle seats. So about the conversation, here are the questions about the conversation. What request does the passenger make? How does the flight attendant respond? What reasons does she give? How does the passenger end up getting what he wants? So let's answer the first question. What request does the passenger make from the flight attendant? Of course, he, uh, he has a request. He asked the flight atten uh, attendant. So what was the request? Yes, he would like to change seats. He would like to change his seat. Uh, instead of the aisle seat, he wants to go to the window seat, as I said before, which he actually uh, booked. Uh, how does the flight attendant respond? What reasons does she give? What was her response? How did she respond? Very good. She says that changing seats won't be possible because it wouldn't be fair to other passengers. It's also against the policy of the airline. She said, sorry, we can't, uh, we can't, uh, we can't grant you this, uh, grant you this uh, request. It's against the policy to change seats. And it wouldn't be fair to other passengers because you can change your seat whenever you want. So it wouldn't be fair to other passengers who might also want to change their seats. Again, she says that changing seats won't be possible because it wouldn't be fair to other passengers. It's also against the policy of the airline. How does the passenger in the end up getting what he wants? So at the end, we, knew, we know that he gets what he wants and he said, awesome. How did that happen? How at the end of the story did the passenger ending up getting what he wants? Yes, the passenger was in the wrong seat from the beginning. He was at the wrong seat to begin with. He moves to his assigned seat, which is the one he wanted. So by mistake, he went to the wrong seat. He ended up with the right seat by mistake. So again, the passenger was in the wrong seat to begin with. He moves to his assigned seat, which is the one that he actually wanted. So let's uh, jump to the your turn uh, part here. Role play with a partner. Imagine you are at a shopping mall. Make a special request of the sales clerk or assistant. Use phrases from making and declining special requests. So this is the box here from uh, where you can make or decline a special request. 
whether you want to ask, make a, a special request, or you decline a request. So I wonder if it, it would be possible. This is making a request. Do you think it would be possible? This is also making a request. Unfortunately, that's not possible. This is declining a request. I wish it were possible, but etc. This is also declining a request. That won't be possible. I'm afraid we can't. This is declining also. We can't do it because the problem is all of these are declining requests. Using phrases like these makes the request sound more polite, sounds more polite. So most of them are formal language requests. Uh, using these would make your request more polite. When you want to decline a, rec a request, you don't say no. You say, I'm afraid we can't do that. Uh, I wish it were possible, but we can't do that. Sorry. So these uh, uh, making and declining requests are more polite. So can you find examples of the phrases in the conversation? Let's see the conversation. This is the first part of the conversation. Can you see some of them here? Let's take, uh, take just one or two. Yes, here. Passenger, no, but I wonder if I can ask you a question. I wonder if I can ask you a question. Here's trying to make a request. Also here, I was wondering if it would be possible. I was wondering if it would be possible. Then you state your request. His request was to change seats. I wonder if it would be possible to change seats. Also here, the attendant said, unfortunately, that won't be possible. So she is politely declining the request. Also here, please try to understand the problem is, then you uh, say why you declined the problem, the request. Pli please try to understand the problem is, etc. And with that, we end our lesson. Thank you for listening so much. See you next session, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum.